We didn't do anything else to it except for tires and a bath. Yeah. Welcome to the Bike Man Show. for the winter time and what better thing than the winter time because we're going to go hardcore we're going to go with some snow chains as you can see the beautiful slip knot snow chain we bought these approximately a year ago and uh, they've been sitting in the warehouse we had to find a bicycle that they would fit you're going to need at least the width of a pencil in between wherever you're going to in between the frame and the tire and the tire because the chains are going on the tire this is especially critical right in like this area here okay got to be careful there you got to be careful down here if you have the distance of a pencil you should be golden and it should the chain should fit so check that before you even think about ordering now these are the small 26 inch goes from 1.9 to 2.25. That is the size of the tire or the wheel that these chains can fit. I guess they make an, a large as well. We only have the small. They fit on with the turnbuckle. This one here is on wrong. And I'll show you why it's on wrong. Here it is here. And you can see how these things, the turnbuckle, unturns like that. So now, as the wheel is turning this way, and it gets down towards the bottom, it's going to jam all of the gook and the grime into the threads right in here. So it's on backwards. This has got to get turned around. So that way, when it's going in the right direction, it just, the stuff just, and I'll show you how to get that. I'll, I'll show you how that's done. Give this a little turn over here. Um, come on in here close there, camera guy. We unscrew these turnbuckles. The other thing, too, is that it comes with this little guy here. This is like a little extension, if you need to. I think we can get away without using this. It, oh, it doesn't quite make it. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the air out of the tire in order for it to make it. It's gonna, everything's going to go get depressed down a little bit. And now it should be enough. And then we'll reinflate after we get her on there. Oh yeah, we're gonna make it no problem. Now, let's get the other side going here. We'll take out that little spacer. And we'll get them on going properly. They come right off. Now, do you understand what I'm talking about? I don't want the stuff to get jammed into that little, into here. So when it's going, I want it to, I want the ending to be like with this part going uh, this way. Let me show you. You just kind of spread it on there. It's like putting on chain mail. Going out to do some battle. You definitely gotta do some battle if you're gonna put these babies on your bike. This is not for the timid, that's for sure. You really need a uh, set of cojones to be commuting in the wintertime on a bike. This is going to help you out for sure. Alright, back up to the top. Oh, you see I did it. Damn it, I did it wrong again, didn't I? Alright, we're going to go the other way now. You see how that is? So now, if that was going this way, all of the stuff would cram into that. That's no good. No good. I thought I had it right the first time, but I didn't. Good thing I'm double checking myself. So we'll go on the other way. We'll go in this way. Silly bike, man. Well, 
what can I tell you? Even the bike man makes a mistake once in a while. The nice part about the snow chains, opposed to like a studded tire, is that you could put, take them on and take them off. Relatively easily. All right, now we're cooking. I want to get the other one there too, going at the same speed. Oops. All right, now we're going to cinch them up as tight as we possibly can. Boom. So now, does everybody, did I make myself clear on that, son of a, about, about how to get it on there so that the cook doesn't get jammed into the threads? Yep. Everybody understanding that? Wheel spins this way. We want all of the stuff to go sliding right off. Okay, let's make sure our chain's nice and straight and even on the whole shooting match. Looks good. Let me go over here to get some air going. Get a little air going in there and the slip knot chains. This item here is going to be on our uh, our auction center, our, our, our clearance area. So you might want to check that out on our clearance area. I don't see a lot of need for it. I will see how, if, it, if they start to really sell and they seem to be really doing the right thing. A little bit of air at a time. Make sure that our tire is seating, guys, okay? Get a gauge, check that. So please check out our bargain basement area, our closeout area. There's 60 PSI in there. It's looking good. Everything's cool. So there you have it. Slip knot chains on the commuter bike. Yeah. One other thing that we talked about on the commuter bike was tying and soldering spokes which we're working on the rear wheel of a commuter right here, as a matter of fact. And we're tying and soldering the spokes, as you can see. So, how do we tie and solder the spokes? That is a good question. And why do we tie and solder the spokes? The reason that we tie and solder the spokes is so that we make this thing really, really strong. We get a call pretty regularly on, around here. Hi, bike man. I am 300 and 400 and 600 and I'm a heavy guy. And I don't know if the wheels are going to support it. I'm 230. Anything over 230, you don't have to do this, but boy, it sure is going to help you out. It's not a necessity, but what it's going to do is it's going to strengthen the wheel. This is an old time trick. I've taken the flange of my hub from here and I've just made it go out to here. So I've decreased the distance from my spoke out. So now this is shorter, which in turn is going to make it stronger. The farther out it, stronger. So we're going to stiffen that up by tying and soldering the spokes. How do we tie and solder? First thing is, we have to make sure that it's clean physically. So you're going to go along with a little piece of sandpaper underneath side, the little crack, this little crack, both sides, all the way around, okay? Take your time, get it nice and clean. I've done this, I've pre-did these before, so you might, you know, really take a, take your time to, to get them nice and clean. Next, we need wire. I use copper wire. We're going to clean our copper wire as well. Take a hunk of, run your sandpaper on there a couple times to make sure she's nice and clean. Now, we need about six inches or so. Let me cut a bunch of these so that way we're ready and you can get the idea. Then we're going to start. We're going to go right into here like that, and we're going to, like you're, like you're lacing up your boots, nice and even, nice and tight. Go two times, three times around this way, and then two times with the other part, two to three times with the other one. Push it in with your fingernail. Make sure it's nice and straight. 
Give you one more. Come up to the top, and now we're going to twist these together, making a little pigtail. Pink. Give it a little snip. I don't know. Leave it about a quarter inch or so. Bend that quarter inch right down, right into that. Did you catch that? Would you like to see it again? Straight up, even. Down. Two or three times on this side. Two or three times on the other side. Push it together with your fingernails. Make sure that they're in. It's in the center, right? Then a little wrapper for the pigtail. Snip it off. Quarter of an inch. And fold it down. One more time. So now we've cleaned it physically with our sandpaper. Now we're going to have to clean it chemically with flux, which is a gooey pasty type of thing. Now we only did these three, so that's, we'll do the other ones in a little bit. Next, a little bit of flux. This kit came with Shows a little... Shows the top. Water-soluble paste flux. It's a little on the cookie side, as you can see. Just need a little bit. And we're just going to give that a little dab of right on there. I usually use my finger. Oh, I didn't push this one down. There we go. The flux is going to help the, the solder flow nicely, as well as it's chemically clear, and so it's really going to adhere nicely. Uh, the solder is going to uh, absorb right into that. All right, now, two different ways we can do this. Or you can do it. You can use a soldering iron, which looks like this. Okay. The soldering iron, I use that for wires and stuff. It's a little bit heavier duty. It does work. It takes a little bit longer. you got to let the trigger go. I'm going with our propane torch today. It makes things a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. Crack that open. Give it a little shot. We are now live. Be careful. It is, it's hot. Okay. Now, I'm going to just heat. Obviously, I'm not pushing it onto that yet. I'm going to just start to heat that up a little bit. You can see the flux starting to bubble. You wait for the material to get hot, and then you can see how that solder just melts right in there. Give it another little shot. A little shot. Now we got a little too hot on that one. Next one. Heat her up. When it starts to melt the solder, slack off. Slack off on the heat a little bit. Another little hot. Done. Next. Going along. Wait until she gets hot. When she gets hot, melt the solder right on. Dripping is good. It's that simple to tie and solder a spoke, a wheel, to make it bulletproof. I had an uncle one time. He was in a yeah, he was in a wheelchair, the poor guy, and he was big. He had to be 350, 400 pounds, and they had to get him a special wheelchair. They got the special wheelchair. He's in a nursing home. This is when he's older, and. Uh, he went around on that for about a month, month and a half, and the wheels started to loosen up. Again, it was brand new. It didn't have time. They didn't retention it. The wheels got all whacked out. We went to visit him. Oh, my wheelchair's broken. Well, let me see that thing. I checked it out. Yeah, it's broken. I took the wheels. I took the whole thing home. I trued up the wheels on the uh, wheelchair, and then I tied and soldered the spokes again. Never again did that wheelchair get a wobble in it. Nothing. The nurses, I was, they were in love with me, man. They thought I was a miracle worker. All I did was apply a little bit of old school stuff to a new school thing. And boy, oh boy, did it make it beef. So tying and soldering, it works. Yeah, it's a little bit ugly. But what are you going to do? All right, after she cools off, my little story helped me out there to cool it off. We're going to give it a little wipe down with a little damp 
paper cloth, a uh, damp paper towel, yeah, with a damp uh, rag. And then you can hit it with a little dry wire brush too if you would like to get that flux off of there. You got to get that flux off after it's been all burnt up and whatnot. The, uh, the flux will add, is it, it'll, it'll corrode, it'll help to corrode your, uh, your spokes. So you want to get it off as best you can. Another little wipe down, she's done. So there she is. Let's put our commuter back together. We took our freewheel off on this thing. We used uh, a uh, FR1 in order to take our freewheel off. Let me put that freewheel back on again. It's a five-speed. Heads up, let me in there. Five-speed freewheel, FR1, right? That's what we used to get it off. To get it back on again, you don't need any tool to put the, put the freewheel back on again. Goes right on. All right. That takes care of that. We're not going to use that dork disc on this bike. Get rid of the dork disc. All right. So there you have it. Commuter bike looking good. Tied and soldered with chains. We are ready for the winter. Let me take it down out of the rack. We'll show you how this thing works. I'm wondering if these chains are going to work on dry pavement. So stay with us. All right, so we're wrapping up the episode of tying and soldering and uh, the snow chains. Before I get done putting this thing down and ride off into the sunset for you guys on the dry pavement with the snow chains, because I know you're dying to see that happen, you're wondering if it can work or not, uh, me too. I'm just giving my brake pads a little tune-up. Instead of replacing them, you... Uh, Sometimes if you just give them a little file, you get them down there, and you give them a nice flat file. Because the pads get like an eraser on a pencil. That's all you need to do, just enough to get the, to get to the, down to some fresh rubber. Um, they get like a dried up eraser, and you got to get down to the fresh rubber, and it helps out the brakes considerably. So, I did the other side, I did the front, and I did the rear. I just was finishing this up right now. So, uh, to make sure my brakes are going to stop because of my wicked speed that I'm going to go when I got my snow chains on. <laughs> All right, one more quickie with the snow chains, you know. I am absolutely positive that the snow chains are going to work on the pavement, but it's almost like riding a snow, uh, I shouldn't call them snowmobiles, I got to call them snow machines. Snow machine on dry grass and pavement and whatnot, it'll work, it'll go, it will beat the living crap out of the machine but it can work. You're going to beat up the tread. You're going to beat up your skis. I got a feeling that this is going to be the same kind of thing. You're not going to want to be riding it very long or very far on dry pavement. You're going to be looking for the snow if you have these babies on. Next episode, we're going to go over all of our accessories. All right. You going to follow me over here? It's kind of like massaging on the buckets while it's going down the road. <laughs> Tickle it. I can make turns. It's actually not that bad. A little rough though on the pavement, but it does work. I want you to never fear. I hope you guys are having fun with the commuter series. Never fear. The bike man for you is here.